We had an example of this a few years ago in California where a youngster of about 15 took his father's automobile out of the garage without permission and without having a license to drive and raced it through the streets and killed a young boy. And the boy who did it was apprehended, of course, arrested and tried. And you know what? The parents of the killed boy did? They went to the court and asked the judge to parole that boy in their custody so they could adopt him as their son and bring him up in the right way. And the judge did it. And that boy is an adopted son in the household of the parents whose son he killed. I don't know whether we could rise to that degree of Christhood, but they did. And then you'll only know whether you have the right to call yourself the full Christ if you know in your heart you could do that. So it is then. Let us acknowledge this. It is true. Christ is my life, my mind, my soul, my being. Christhood is my true name and nature. And my effort in this plane of life is to so live as to rise to the actual demonstration of my sonship. And if year by year I can so live as to show forth a little more and more and more of that Christhood, there is hope that one day we will attain. Now, this brings us to another of our New Testament teachings. Have that mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, the truth is, you have it. And those whom he addressed had it. But again, he was recognizing you haven't attained it. You haven't achieved it. You're not living it. Therefore, I say to you now, have that mind in you. Be the Christ. And so again, you'll find that the mission of Christ Jesus is first to reveal to us that there is such a mind such a transcendental consciousness. Secondly, how we may attain it. And so you have again the function and the message and the mission of the infinite way. It reveals that there is a superconsciousness that we may attain. It is a revelation that there is a divine state of consciousness which is called Christ consciousness, spiritual consciousness, divine consciousness, absolute consciousness, fourth dimensional consciousness. But the infinite way acknowledges with the master that as humans we don't have access to it, but that we must so live as to attain oneness with it. And the infinite way then goes on to say, since there is a hue who is a human being, since there is a divine consciousness, the infinite way has as its function showing you, teaching you how to become consciously one with it and demonstrate the 15th chapter of John. Sometimes students ask me if I'm not afraid that our students are going to get weary hearing me talk about the 15th chapter of John. Those who do may withdraw because 
As long as I live on this plane of existence, I will be drawing attention to the 15th chapter of John, in which it is revealed that unless you are living consciously one with your vine, with your source, unless you are abiding in the word and letting the word abide in you, you are as a branch of a tree that is cut off. You are the creature Paul spoke of who is not under the law of God, neither indeed can be. But that when you unite yourself again consciously with the vine, with your Christhood, with your spiritual identity, when you consciously abide in the word and let the word abide in you, then you bear fruit richly because now you have that mind that was in Christ Jesus. You are at one with it and you draw on it and it becomes the meat, wine, and water of your life. It becomes the staff of life, the bread. It becomes the power of resurrection unto you. But ye must be born again. Ye must renew your conscious oneness with God. 